everybody, welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about my top five budgeting tips. Okay, I lied, it's actually seven tips. So this first one, it's not even like a tip, but if you are someone who really hates budgeting, maybe don't call it budgeting, maybe calling it your money method or just a way of you to get on top of your finances. Budgeting is very, it's a very, it's not a sexy word. It's quite boring and it's very like finance driven. And a lot of people find talking about money really taboo and actually really quite hard. I love talking about money. I could talk about it all day long but for someone who really doesn't like to budget or to sit down and look at their finances it can be really quite intimidating and quite boring but for myself personally and my opinion is that if you do not know your current financial situation you can potentially get into financial situations that are going to have a really large impact on you later in life I also think it's just really important to know where all of your hard earned money is going. You know, a lot of us work 40 or more hours a week and we, at the end of that week, have no more money left and we are sitting there wondering why with nothing in our bank account to show for it. So that's also why I think that doing something like this, having a financial map or a budget is something that's really quite important to myself personally. Some of my family members, my mom, she really loves to budget. She does a monthly one every single month. My sister on the other hand is not someone who likes to budget. She thinks it's a little bit boring or it's just not something that she's interested in. Lewis as well doesn't have a set budget either, but he is very well aware of what goes into his bank account and what comes out, which is also something that you need to be mindful of as well. Okay, so let's get into tip number one. Tip number one is to actually try out a few different budgeting styles. So there are lots of different ways that you can sort out your finances. It's not a one size fits all. So for whatever works, well for me it may not necessarily work well for you so i'm just going to name off a couple of the budgeting styles you can then go and research them i'm also going to be making a video on the different kinds as well so the first one is the envelope system this is very american so in australia we do obviously have cash but it's not something as common like not a lot of people use cash as much as they do fpos or credit cards so that is when every single category of your needs and your wants gets a certain amount of cash and you only have that cash to pay for those certain things like groceries, petrol, fun, might be some sort of savings account. We don't necessarily do that in Australia. Some people do and some people really like and it works well for them. Uh, but I have found that it works probably more for the American community than the Australian community. The other one is the 20, 30, 50 budget style. That is when 50% of your income goes towards your needs. So that is groceries, that is mortgage, that is um, anything that is essential to you in your life. 30% goes to fun and you can change these as well, but 30% of your income goes towards fun. So that's anything that you really kind of want. And then 20% goes into savings or investments. I had tried this at some stage, but I didn't really quite like it just because, I don't know, I feel like 30% for, of fun for me was a bit too much money and I ended up just blowing it on a whole bunch of crap. So I don't particularly use that method. I don't really quite like that method either. The one that I actually use is the zero based method. This is where you end up at the end of the month or every single paycheck with zero. So every dollar of your income is accounted for and it goes towards a particular thing. Everything that I get paid for goes towards either essentials, it goes towards sinking funds, fun, and then savings. So I, whenever I get paid, because I am casual, I, let's say I get paid $2,000, every single dollar of that $2,000 has a purpose and I know exactly where it's going to go. I might set $200 of it towards fun and that's all that I'm allowed for fun and I can use all of it, but I'm not allowed to touch anything else. I might say that $55 goes towards clothes for the month and I'm allowed to use that money to go and buy clothes. So I'm not left with just this $100 that's sitting in my account kind of doing nothing when that 
it could be potentially blown on absolutely nothing or it could be allotted to a savings account so i actually really do enjoy the zero based budget that's one that really works well for me and it kind of keeps me accountable and i know exactly where all of my hard-earned money is going so they're the top three that i think are the most common or most well known i like i said i am going to make a video on all the different kinds of budgeting methods so please make sure that you do hit that subscribe button so then you can be notified when i upload that video as well as giving this video a big thumbs up because it obviously very much supports small channels like mine pushes us out to other people as well as just making us feel a little bit more loved. Number two is setting up sinking funds or emergency funds. These are so, so important to your finance, any kind of financial situation that you might be in. Sometime in your life, you may come across an emergency, whether that's your car breaking down, whether that's you going to the hospital because you need something, touch wood that that never ever has to happen. Say something happens to your house or a rental property that you are in, someone damages something and you need to pay for those damages. An emergency fund is there purely for an emergency. Let's say that unfortunately you get fired or you let go from your job, which you know in the past previous couple years has certainly happened. An emergency fund is there to support you through those hard months until you find that next job. For me personally, I have three months of income in my emergency fund. That's $8,000 for me. And I don't touch that unless it is an absolute emergency. So in the three years or two years that I've had it, I haven't touched it once. I also haven't really added anything into it because it's not a savings account. It's not for a particular like savings goal. It's just in case I can't pay the mortgage for one particular month, that money I can use to put towards the mortgage. And then I can just slowly start building it up again. So emergency funds are super, super important. Some people say three months, six months or 12 months of your income. I think it definitely depends on your stability of your job. So if your job is certainly not stable, I would suggest maybe six to 12 months because I am a teacher. I'm always kind of in need or there is usually work available at some point. I have three months just in case. Sinking funds, I also think are very, very important. Sinking funds are a strategic way of saving money for a particular purchase. And you can do this by setting aside a small amount of money every single month, fortnight, week, whenever it is that you get paid. I personally use sinking funds for all of my annual expenses. So everyone usually has an expense that they know is coming up throughout the year, whether that is vet bills, whether that is rental bond because you need to move out and move into a new place, whether that is for your car registration, your car insurance, whatever it might be, sinking funds are a great way of getting small amounts of money and slowly building it up over time. So when that bill is due, it alleviates so much stress. So let's say for example, that your car insurance is $500 a month, then you would do $500 divided by 12, because there's 12 months in a year, that means that every single month you need to put away 41 or round it up to $42, which doesn't sound as scary as then trying to pay for a $500 bill. And the more that you do this, it'll actually build up a lot quicker and a lot more seamlessly, and it won't seem as hard the more that you do it. I have, I think like 10 sinking funds for Christmas, birthdays, all of my car expenses. I have some for my health insurance. I also have one set aside for a holiday as well. Little bits of money I put away every single fortnight or month, as well as clothes that I can spend on whatever I like, makeup, whatever. But the more that it builds up, the more that I can spend, not frivolously, but without the fear of guilt. The next one is to work out your needs versus your wants and how much they are. So obviously everyone has essentials. What are your essentials every single month? What is the cost of that? What is your mortgage or rent? What is your groceries? What is your bills? What is anything else? Medication? What is your anything else that you essentially need to live your life? Whether that be like petrol, health insurance, whatever it is, calculate all of that per month. And then maybe see whatever you have left over of your income, set aside a small portion of wants. So wants is something that you can live without. It might be the gym. It might be getting your hair cut. It might be fun money. It might be clothes. These are all of things that you don't necessarily 
need to survive because you've most likely got clothes already in your closet. But what are the wants that you really do want and how much are you willing to spend on them? You'd actually be probably quite surprised how much the wants really do stack up versus the needs. Because a lot of the time, you know, we'll say, oh, I really want to go out for dinner. Okay, well, how much is dinner? Well, it's going to cost me $100. Okay, well, then what is your groceries for the month? Oh, well, it's 200 So you're essentially saying that in order for you to live, essentially live, that's going to cost you $200 in food. But because you want to do something that's a little bit more fun, that's going to cost you half of what your grocery budget is. So I think it's really good to be, and there's nothing wrong with having wants. I have fun money every single month, which is $240. That's what I can spend on whatever I want. I think it's just really important to know what it is that you essentially need to live and what it is that you actually just want. What is, because these, these wants are things that you can be flexible with your budgeting. So if some of your essentials are maybe lacking in funds, you can take from your wants, take that money and put it towards your essentials. So then you can live a more stress-free life. That's my opinion anyway. I think that the essentials are obviously just so much more important. They need to take a lot more consideration and thought behind them. And then the wants just kind of follow on from whatever is left over. Next is to be flexible. No month or no two months are going to be the same. I was talking to someone on Instagram the other day, or maybe it was on YouTube, and they were like, oh, I had an unexpected wedding that was come, that came up in January and that had to come out of my savings because I just wasn't like budgeting for it and I wasn't aware that it was going to happen. So I think that it's really good to be flexible in your budget and know that if something does come up, you have an account set aside like an emergency fund where you can take money from that account and use it for that unexpected expense and then just slowly build it up over time. So, you know, Christmas is probably one of the most expensive months out of the year. A lot of the time we say that we have an unexpected party, but we know that December is always an expensive month because it's the start of summer in Australia and people go out and they spend more money on dinners, drinks, and they see friends a lot more. Whereas winter is a lot more quiet and indoors and a bit more cozy where we don't tend to go splurging as much, depending on where you live, obviously. But I think that knowing that every single month is not going to be the same. So kind of including that into your budget or having an emergency fund on the side that if a month is way more expensive than maybe the previous month, you have that buffer to stop the financial stress. Number four is to keep it simple and realistic. No budget, your budget is not going to be the same as mine. My budget is not going to be the same as my mom's because everyone's life and values are very, very different. But I think keeping it as simple as possible and do not overcomplicate things. I see all the time on Google, and I might put like examples here of like Excel spreadsheets that look really cool. They're all color coordinated. They're beautiful. They look very, very aesthetic. To me, my that blows my mind. It's so, so complicated. All I do is I write things down in a book. I write down what my month, what my mortgage is, what my grocery bills are, what my phone bill is. I write everything down per category and I don't make it too, too complicated. If it is too complicated, it is so hard to stick to, very hard to understand, and often not realistic or sustainable. So I think that with your budget as well, you do need to have a realistic budget. Work within your means, your financial means, not somebody else's. So if you earn $1,000 a week, is it realistic for you to save 50 or 75% of it? Possibly not. Maybe you only save 10 to 20% because you're on the lower income scheme. Now there's nothing absolutely wrong with earning less money, but it's knowing how to make the money work for you and what your essentials and your wants are. It's really important to make sure that your budget is realistic. Let's say that you earn $1,000 a month and you want to be able to save $10,000 out of the year. That's just not realistic. It is not realistic for your income unless you are willing to increase your income somehow drastically. It is not realistic for you of your annual income, which would be $12,000 to save $10,000 of it. 
maybe depending on your living situation, it is easier for you to save maybe 5,000, maybe 1,000, maybe 3,000. Getting realistic with what you can actually save and put towards your financial future definitely depends on how much you earn. Please don't look at somebody else's income that is maybe $3,000 a month and use their income to kind of create inspiration for you and motivation. It can be very, very demeaning when you see someone earn an absolute ton of money and saving a ton of money when you yourself are earning a lower income. I bet you the people that are probably earning more than you are probably not saving as much as you. That happens with lifestyle creep. A lot of people when their income increases, their lifestyle wants, not the needs, the wants also increase. So I think just go by what you earn personally. There's nothing wrong with what you earn, but make it realistic, make the savings goals realistic to you. If you do that, you're more likely to achieve them and you're more likely to achieve them quicker as well. Tip number five is super important and that is to have an emergency fund. I've already spoken about this before in the previous tips, but I really do think that having an emergency fund allevi alleviates so much financial stress and it is such a great buffer that if anything, unfortunately, was to happen, you have something there that is going to support you. So it's not taking it out of your super or it's not out of your savings for a particular goal. It is meant to be there for an emergency. And it doesn't matter what the emergency is, as long as it is an emergency. And it's not that, oh, you really want to go on a holiday, but the tickets are $2,000 and I don't have that money right now. So I'm going to take it out of my emergency fund. That's not the purpose of the emergency fund. The, um, the fund is there to support you if something unforeseen does happen. So if your car breaks down or if you get into a car accident, touch wood that you don't again, and you need to pay the $750 excess to get your car back or to get your car repaired, that is an emergency because if you are someone who needs your car for work in order to earn money, to me, that is something that you can use your emergency fund for. However, if it's someone's birthday and you don't have a new outfit, you can't use your emergency fund for that. Go into your closet, choose something else or borrow from a friend. It has to be something that is going to impact you financially or impact your essential life. Again, a lot of people say having six to 12 months of an emergency fund is something that you should have in your account. I personally think it depends on your kind of job, which I've already stated. I have three months worth of, of an emergency fund, which is $8,000. That covers my mortgage and my groceries and my bills. So it doesn't cover anything else. It doesn't cover any fun, nothing like that. It's only those three essential things that are going to keep the house or keep the roof over my head, as well as the food in my fridge and all of the electricity, gas and water flowing through my home. That to me is an emergency fund. The way that I calculated my emergency fund was I figured out how much my mortgage was e each month how much I need for all of my bills, and then as well as the grocery bill amount that we spend every single month. And then I multiplied it by three. So I, I can't even remember what it is off the top of my head now, but if I have $8,000 and I divide it by three, it means that to live my essential life is around $2,666. It's probably a little bit less than that now. It's My emergency fund is probably more like four thousand uh four months but because i kind of increased it a little bit i originally wanted seven <clears throat> but i decided that eight was a nicer number more in there is great because if a really bad emergency happens i can have that money there the next tip is a little bit woo woo but i think it's really important and that is to decide your why so why do you want to start budgeting why do you want to change your budget up Think about those, think about that question because it will really drive the way that you look at your finances. Myself personally, my why is to stop financial stress and anxiety and also so that I can have fun. Back a couple of years ago, I didn't have a budget. I had no idea where any of my money was going and I was in $5,000 worth of credit card debt. I had very minimal savings and I just didn't have a very good money mindset. 
Whereas now I really want to get on top of everything. So then when bills come up, I can pay for them straight away and I don't feel guilty or I don't feel stressed because I cannot pay for it. I have decided on things that are going to be realistic, things that are going to be easy for me to do and to achieve because I am lazy. I don't like complicated stuff. So I really want to make sure that I feel secure in my own financial situation, even though I do not earn a lot of money. I last year, probably, I don't even know how much I earned. $50,000 maybe, maybe less than that. I don't know because I'm a casual teacher. I don't earn a ridiculous amount of money throughout the year, but even though I'm not earning a super high income, I have an emergency fund. I have some savings and I have some sinking funds that are pretty much all filled very, very early on in the year. And when those bills come up, I can pay for them. I'll be stress-free. So that is my why. My why is so then I feel good about my financial situation. Other people might be that they've done a budget, but it's not really working for them. They find it really hard to stick to. Some people may not have a budget at all, but they really wanna start saving for a particular goal, or they just wanna have a lump sum of money, whether that be $1,000, $5,000, $500, uh, $10,000 in their account to make themselves feel financially secure. There is no right or wrong way to decide your why, but it's really important to be very clear in what you want to achieve and have kind of a, a timeline, a realistic timeline of when you want to achieve those things. So if you want to achieve that thousand dollars by the end of the year and you achieve it, maybe the, the next year you push out your goal to be maybe $2,000. You achieve that, you keep going. And the more that you do it and the more that you know why you want to budget or why you want to get on top of your finances, the easier it will actually be and the more motivating it will be. So every single small goal that you do, decide on and that you want to achieve and then you do achieve it those bigger goals will be so much easier for you to actually get on top of and to achieve as well those are my top seven budgeting tips i know that some of them may you may have heard before but i think it's really important to hear them again and to be really honest with yourself in why you want a budget why it's not working for you and what kinds of things that you can change to improve your financial situation let me know if you have any other budgeting tips that I have missed because I assure you there are hundreds of them. Please leave them down in the comments below. Let's open the financial conversation a little bit more. Let's talk about our goals. The more that you talk about it, the more likely you are going to achieve it. So let's do that in the comments. Also, don't forget to click the subscribe button to find out all of the different kinds of budgeting methods that you can use to start your budget. and. I will see you in a video sometime in the very near future, guys. Bye.